Welcome back to Rock the GVM, folks. This is Daniel, and in this video, I'm going to discuss SBT. This tutorial is about all the essential SBT features that every Scala developer needs to know. So if you're getting started with Scala or SBT, this video is for you. Now, I recommend that you follow along with what I do here on camera to get some hands-on practice with SBT. This is not necessarily a coding tutorial, but it's a walkthrough about SBT and the essential features that you might need for your own Scala projects. And whenever you need to refresh your memory or you need to go back and check what an SBT configuration or feature does, just refer back to the video or the very long form blog post at the blog and I'm going to attach a link in the description. Now I'm going to start this tutorial from the absolute basics, which is the installation. So if you want to install Scala or SBT, you need to go to scala-lang.org, which is the host website for the Scala programming language. And if you want to install Scala and or SBT, you need to go here where it says install. Now, depending on when you watch this video, the setup of the website, the looks of the website might have changed, but there should be an install or download link at the very top of the page. And the page contains instructions for your operating system. I have a Mac, but you have a Linux, Windows, or other operating system with, with instructions for every platform. Now, if you're on a Mac, you need to simply copy this command and paste it into a terminal window. I happen to already have done that because I've been uh, running Scala for a while. So if you want to install Scala or SBT for the first time, feel free to pause the video and follow these instructions. Now, after you've done that, I recommend you navigate to a terminal window on your computer, create a new folder, and I'm going to show you what an SBT project contains. Right now in my new project, I don't have anything. So uh, if I do an LS, notice that I had I have nothing inside. And if you want to create an SBT project from scratch, all you need is a file called build.sbt. So if I do build.sbt, you can create a text file in your favorite uh, text editor. And build.sbt is essentially a Scala file that will have a special structure or syntax. So it's mostly resembling the Scala language itself, so you can write regular Scala code inside. And I'm going to show you what kind of thing you can add into this build.sbt. Let's set up the Scala version, for example. So I'm going to say Scala version, and I'm going to use a special operator called colon equals. And I'm going to use, let's say, 2.13.8, which is, at the moment of this recording, the latest SCA 2.13 version. And after that, I'm going to save it, and I'm going to run the command called SBT, exactly as it is. If you want to check the version of SBT, you can do SBT dash dash version to find out your version of SBT. Now, I'm simply going to run the SBT command inside this folder, which only has the build SBT file, and this SBT command will load the appropriate libraries and so on and so forth to be able to set up this project and it will create a bunch of folders in my new project. Now, when you hit SBT, you're uh, being greeted with a Scala REPL, which contains a bunch of commands that you can run inside this build tool. I'm going to quit for a moment, so I'm going to hit Control c to exit this REPL. And if you do an ls-la, uh, you will find a folder called Project and a folder called Target. Now, the target directory contains all the binaries that will be compiled by the Scala compiler, and Project will contain some additional files for SBT, for example, if you want to customize SBT in any way. Now, I'm going to enter build.sbt again, and I'm going to set up some other variables inside. For example, the version of the project. So I'm going to say version colon equals, let's say, 1.0. So notice that you can assign some global variables such as Scala version and version. These are globally uh, recognized variables by SBT. And these are project uh, scoped. So the entire project will have this Scala version and the entire project will have version 1.0. There are a couple of other variables that you can add. For example, the name of the project, which is, let's say, uh, Rock the JVM, and the organization. So organization... You can use the same operator, com.rockthejvm, something like that. So you can uh, save this file and you can run the SBT command again if you want. Now, the standard SBT uh, project will follow this structure. The project and target folders are auto automatically created by SBT. Now, at this point, we need to create a source directory. So I'm going to do mkdir-p and I'm going to have source main Scala and another one for tests. So source test Scala. So uh, if I uh, have a tree of 
uh, this directory, we have a source directory with main and test. And here we have Scala sources for uh, source files, that is for the program files and for tests as well. Now, inside the project directory, if I do cd uh, project, here inside we have a file called build.properties. And if we show uh, build.properties, here we have the SBT version with which we are going to compile this project. At the moment of this recording, we have 155, but you can change that if you want to upgrade to a newer SBT version. So now we have a project directory target and then a source directory. So let me go back to source main Scala and I'm going to create a package for the root organization of this project, which is com.rockthejvm. So I'm going to say mkdir-p, I'm going to say com.rockthejvm. And I'm going to change directory to this one. And then I'm going to create a source file. So I'm going to say, let's call this main Scala. And I'm going to insert a package. So package com rock the JVM. And then I'm going to have an object main with a bunch of stuff for the main method. So I'm going to have my def main with args, which is an array of string. And this returns unit. And then let's say this is just print line learning SBT, something like that. Now we can exit and then we can go back to the uh, main project. So I'm going to say uh, SBT at the root, so SBT, which will start the necessary SBT uh, shenanigans here so that we can run this REPL. And then I'm going to run a command called compile, which will obviously compile the Scala file into the appropriate bytecode. So this will trigger the Scala compiler and it will probably take a little while before the uh, Scala compiler is warm and then it will simply compile main.scala. It took nine seconds for three lines of code, which is quite disproportionate, but it will probably compile a little bit quicker if we uh, simply change main.scala and hit compile again. So it's uh, quite okay. Then we can run the application in main by using this command, run main, and then the uh, fully qualified class name, which is com.rockthejvm.main. And obviously this will simply invoke the, the bytecodes in the class file, and this is the output of the program. And uh, if you want to uh, trigger incremental compilation and hit uh, auto compile while main.scala is being edited in another directory or in some uh, other development environment or text editor, you can hit this tilde and then compile. And this will start a watching process for main.scala. And as main.scala is changed by some other text editor, we can uh, see this uh, file being, being compiled. I can uh, demonstrate that by uh, navigating to my desktop and a new project. And then I can edit. So I'm going to say vim source main scala com rock the jvm main dot scala. And let's say I would like to uh, say learn sbt auto compile. And then I can simply uh, write this file. So colon w and notice that the top compiler automatically compiled this file as I was changing it in another text editor. Now, this happens for all Scala files that you may have in the project. Now, if you want to change the definition itself in build.sbt, for example, if you want to add external dependencies, you'll have to exit the SBT console, so I'm going to quit, and modify your build SBT and then restart SBT yet again. So let's add an external dependency that is an external library to our project just to demonstrate how that works. So I'm going to uh, vim build SBT and here I'm going to add a new uh, library dependency by modifying a global variable called library dependencies. It's exactly called like this, so library dependencies. And then you can mutate this variable by saying plus equals, and you can add a new library. Let's say I want to add the fancy library from uh, Lihaoyi, uh, which is com li ha o yi. And then I'm going to use the percent symbols. I'm going to add two percent symbols and I'm going to describe what that means. The library name is called fancy with an S. And then the version is, let's say, 040. Now, 
This library will make sure that when SBT starts up uh, this project, this library definition will be downloaded from a resolver. It's usually based on Maven. So uh, because this library is available in Maven Central, SBT will download that as well and store them in uh, the uh, target directory where it has all these binaries. Now, about the percent signs. The percent signs, that is 2% signs, means that the Fancy library, because it's compiled with different versions of Scala, Fancy will be uh, downloaded from Maven Central as Fancy underscore 213. So this is automatically added by SBT and the suffix when you add the 2% signs. If you don't add the 2% signs and add a single one, you'll have to specify the Scala version, so 213, so 213, because most libraries are compiled with different Scala versions and they're not binary compatible with one another except for the Scala 3 track, which is a major improvement on that front. So if you're using Scala 2, you'll have to use the appropriate version of the library compiled for that Scala 2 version. The Scala 3 libraries will be binary compatible, which uh, eases up the development quite a bit. All right. Now, if you want to add more libraries, of course, uh, in real-life projects we have quite a bunch of libraries, you can add a sequence of libraries by saying plus plus equals and then add a sequence, and the sequence has the exact same meaning as the original Scala. So you can have a sequence with a bunch of libraries that you can add and you can mutate this by appending the entire sequence to this library dependencies variable. All right. Now, let me clear up my screen and run SBT again, which will start the necessary data structures for SBT. And if I hit compile, I should get all the uh, library definitions plus the uh, compilation of main.scala in check. And uh, let me actually use uh, the fancy library. So let me go back to main and I'm going to define, uh, let me add a tab. Tabs in Vim are quite uh, horrible. I'm going to have, let's call this uh, fancy string as fancy.str, if I remember correctly. And this is fancy color red wrapping. Let's say uh, this should be a red string or something like that. All right. Now, this fancy string, instead of uh, print line learning SBT auto compile, I'm going to print this fancy str, which will contain Unicode characters to have these um, color sets. So I'm going to have fancy str. All right, let's try this one out. So I'm going to uh, save this file, go back here and go compile. Okay, so we have a uh, write compilation, and then I'm going to say uh, run main, uh, then we have com rock the JVM main, and notice that the red string does show as red here in the console. All right, cool. So this is how we can use an external library after we've uh, modified build.sbt to include that library. Okay, now let me show you tests. So we normally write test uh, cases and uh, place them under source test Scala. Now, if you want to add a library dependency for tests, I'm going to vim build.sbt, I'm actually gonna quit and then um, operate on build.sbt again. And if you want to add a library just for tests, you can add, obviously, uh, you can add a comma here in the sequence, and then you can have, for example, Scala test, which is uh, org.scala test. And then I'm gonna use 2% Scala test. And the, the version at the moment this recording, uh, let me check my notes, it's 3.2.13. And then I'm going to add another percent sign for test. So test is a special token, which is a variable. This is a global uh, immutable value here known to SBT, which is the string test. And this means that this library is only available within the test directory. This is what it means. Okay. Now, let me uh, run the SBT console again. And this should start the SBT console. And let me go create a test file. So I'm going to uh, switch uh, windows here. So I'm going to check back the new project and I'm going to say uh, source main source test uh, Scala and I'm going to have a comrock the JVM. So I'm gonna have mkdir p. So I'm gonna have uh, source test Scala and then comrock the JVM. 
and I'm going to have, let's call Vim, and then I'm gonna say this other thing, and I'm gonna have simple test Scala. Now, I'm going to add a package, so package uh, comrock the JVM. Then I'm going to import, for example, uh, the uh, fun suite from Scala test. So I'm going to import uh, org Scala test uh, fun suite, I think, fun suite with a uh, lower cap S as any fun suite. Now, I don't know these off the top of my head. I have some notes so that I uh, know which types to include. And let me add a simple class. So class, let's call this simple test. And this extends any fun suite. And I'm going to add a small test. You have the uh, test video here on the Rock the JVM channel if you're interested in learning how Scott tests work. So I'm going to have a simple test. Let's call this um, simplest test possible and uh, going to add the appropriate braces so that I don't get screwed and uh, let me assert that Scala is equal or Scala dot to lowercase um, is equal to Scala. Okay, so this is my little class. I'm not going to elaborate on that anymore. So I'm going to write this and then I'm going to hit compile. And when I hit compile, uh, notice that Scala test is downloaded automatically. So uh, the library definitions are automatically downloaded as we hit compile and the compilation was successful. Now, if you want to run this test, you would hit this command in the SBT console. Let's say test colon test only. So just the uh, file that I will specify, and I'm going to use com.rockthejvm.simpletest. Now, the compile uh, command just compiled my source files, but it didn't compile my tests, and my test file has a compiler error because I've forgotten a parenthesis. So let me run this again. And notice that the test was compiled and it was successful. Notice the green uh, piece here, simple test, simplest test possible was successful, and you have some stats here for all your tests within uh, the scope that you specified. Now, if you want to uh, test uh, a variety of files, for example, if you want to match some regex or regex, depending on which camp you're on, you, you can say test, test only, and you can have a regex or regex saying uh, simple test. Because uh, if you want to specify this as a regex, you don't have to specify the uh, fully qualified class name. Of course, this will pa pass just as fine. Okay. Now, if you want to test, uh, test everything that you have under the test scope, that is under the test directory, you can simply call test, and this will uh, run all the tests in your test folder. Also, you can run the SBT test outside the SBT console. So if you quit the SBT console and you say SBT test, this will run the exact same command. And this is true for all the commands within the SBT console. So all the commands that I uh, wrote or executed individually within the SBT console, you can prefix them with the SBT command and they will run independently. Now, I'm going to show you some more complicated features of built SBT, including how to set up multi-module projects and how to run them separately. So to that end, I'm going to create a new multi-module project. Let's call this, dear, let's call this multi-module project. And I'm going to change directory into this one. And I'm going to vim build SBT, and I'm going to start a new build SBT file. And I'm going to add my original variables like the Scala version, the version, the name, and organization, but I'm going to scope them under a constant called this build. So I'm going to say this build slash Scala version is, and I'm going to use this uh, colon equals uh, assigner. So it's 2.13.8 at the moment of this recording. This build slash version is at version, let's say, 1.0. This build slash name is, let's call this multi-module. So this is the name of the entire project. And this build slash, let's call this organization. So organization is uh, com rock the JVM. Now, 
This build is a global scope, so all these settings apply to the entire project, including all the modules that I'm going to specify. And because the build SBT allows plain SCAR syntax, I'm going to create a val. So I'm going to say uh, module uh, one. I'm actually going to give this name, let's call this core. As I'm going to use in parentheses, I'm going to say project in file, and in parentheses, I'm going to use core as a string. So this expression, project in file core, obviously this is regular Scala, the in is a method, project is a uh, globally available data structure, and file core, this is a path to the uh, core subdirectory within this project. So when I execute the SBT command, SBT will create this directory for me. And uh, I'm gonna make this lazy. It's usually good practice to make them lazy because SBT will only need to load them once when needed. So I'm gonna have lazy val. I'm going to create a new module. I'm gonna call this, let's say, server or something like that. So project in file, I'm gonna call this server. And I'm going to have a lazy uh, val. This is the big project. So I'm gonna have root as project uh, in file and I'm going to have dot, which is the root directory. And then I'm going to aggregate. So I'm going to say aggregate. And I'm going to have my core and server submodules inside. Okay. Good. Now, at this point, I'm going to uh, write this file. And I'm going to hit SBT. And when I hit SBT, you'll see that SBT will create the appropriate directories. So let's give it a couple of seconds. And uh, apparently I've had some syntax error. So uh, let me vim again. So we have project in file core, project in file server, and have project in file dot. And I forgot a parenthesis here. And uh, this is typical me when I don't have autocomplete or somebody to yell at me. Then uh, let me run SBT again. This should take a couple of seconds for SBT to spin up the necessary stuff. Okay. Um, cool. Now, if I, uh, okay, let me exit the SBT uh, console and notice that we have a project and a target directory automatically created by SBT for any SBT project, but notice that we now also have core and server subdirectories which will serve as independent modules. And inside the core and server, we can add additional build.sbt files to specify some uh, module-specific settings for both. I'm gonna show you. So for instance, let me uh, make the server directory, the server module, depend on core, assuming that this is where you store your uh, data definitions and server is a dedicated module that relies on this one. Let me uh, vim build SBT again, and I'm going to make server depend on core by saying depends on, and I'm going to use the core variable as a dependency. All right. Now, in this build.sbt file, you can specify the library definitions or uh, module-specific settings here in this file. So I can say lazyval core, let's say, dot uh, settings. And here under settings, you can specify the, um, for example, library dependencies for this project, or you can specify the library dependencies in its own build.sbt, and I'm gonna show you how. So let me uh, remove this little thing, save build SBT, go to core, and I'm going to have another build SBT, and I'm going to say, for instance, library dependencies plus equals, and I'm going to have, let's say, uh, com type save, I'm going to have type save config, so I'm going to say uh, percent percent, and I'm going to use config, and then I'm going to say percent uh, 4.2, uh, 142, 142, checking my notes here, I think I have this Okay, all right, now let me get back to the root. So after I've added the build SBT file for the core project itself, I can run the SBT uh, command yet again, which will spin up the necessary uh, scaffolding. Okay, so the SBT uh, ran correctly for our little project. And for example, if we're interested in the core uh, submodule that we've created, we can do project project, and I'm going to use core here to switch to the core module here under the uh, big directory. So all the commands here will only apply to the core project or the core submodule in my big project.
So if I hit compile or this thing with tilde compile, which will uh, keep in uh, a watcher for files only within this project, it will automatically compile those as well. All the commands are specific to this uh, submodule. Now, some best practices. I'm going to uh, kill this. I'm going to cd core and I'm going to remove build SBT because it's usually good practice, especially for uh, small to medium sized projects to store everything in build.sbt that is in only one build SBT, which is the common one for the entire project. So build.sbt should contain every definition in the entire project, regardless of how many modules you have. Now, if build SBT grows too big, you might want to store those in regular skull files here under the project directory. So let me give an example. So I'm going to switch to this multi-module project in one of my code editors, and I'm going to switch to project, and I'm going to vim a, a Scala file, a plain Scala file. It's called this constants dot Scala. And here in this constant dot Scala, I'm going to create an object. I'm going to call this constants. And here under constants, I'm going to create a simple val. Let's call this root package, which is, let's say, com.typesafe, which is a common prefix for, let's say, a bunch of ACA libraries that you might want to add. Now, this thing is a a uh, pretty uh, contrived example because this constant can also be included in build.sbt directly, but I'm going to show you how this uh, root package constant can be used inside build.sbt. So I'm going to save this, so constant not Scala. Then I'm going to move to build.sbt, and I'm going to have, let's say, the core. I'm going to add some library dependencies here in this core, and I'm going to say settings. So the settings here apply to just this module, and I'm going to say library dependencies. And I'm going to say plus equals, and then I'm going to say constants dot, and I think it's called root package. So constants dot root package. Then I'm going to say percent percent, and then I'm going to use config. Let's say, and then the version, checking notes, it's 142. Okay. Now, this thing, the constants object that I've added under the project directly, uh, is going to be directly available here under build.sbt. So if I hit SBT, hopefully that will simply work uh, to uh, define the library dependencies in the build.sbt. All right, so let's see. It takes a little while. I don't know why it's taking so long. So compilation completed in seven seconds. And notice that this build uh, compiled successfully. So uh, in other words, the com type save string was correctly included. So this is a way that you can eliminate complexity in your uh, build definition by specifying Scala variables and pretty much arbitrary Scala code, but you should use uh, pure values here, such as strings, here under the project directory, and uh, keep them separate from build.sbt and add them automatically in build.sbt because every Scala file in, in definition here under project will be immediately available under build.sbt. Cool. Now, speaking of the uh, project directory, I'm going to show you how you can add plugins under project. So I'm going to navigate back to project and I'm going to add a file called plugins.sbt. So plugins.sbt. Now sbt is not necessarily a simple build tool, but it's very, very powerful and uh, very pluginizable. So I'm going to write a command called add sbt plugin. And you can add a bunch of plugins. For example, if you want to set up your project for Scala.js, you would add a particular SBT plugin, which will allow you to compile Scala to JavaScript. For example, uh, there are SBT plugins for dockerizing an application and so on and so forth. I'm going to use a plugin called SBT assembly from com.e design with um, the digits. Uh, eDesign is Eugene Yokoda, uh, the main uh, maintainer of SBT, and the plugin is called, so I'm going to use the percent sign, it's called sbt-assembly. Assembly. And uh, of course, I'm going to spell it properly because otherwise SBT will fail, and obviously you're going to have to add a uh, some sort of version to this plugin, much like you do on library dependencies. And this is pretty much it. Plugins.sbt is usually a short file with just uh, statements like that. And if you want to enable the assembly plugin by going back to build.sbt. So I'm going to say uh, build sbt. And let's say that, for instance, I want this core module to be uh, build first. And the main class of 
the core module is going to be some sort of uh, main application. Let's call this. Uh, so I'm going to have to say assembly, which is a scope enabled by the plugin. So assembly slash in the same style I was, as we did this build earlier. So assembly slash, and I'm going to have main class. And I'm going to use the assignment operator, and this is going to be an option. So I'm going to say sum with a string with a fully qualified class name of a main application. Then I'm going to add a comma here because every expression here is an argument to the settings function. So I need to make sure that the comma is here. So sum, I'm going to have, let's call this com rock the JVM dot, let's say core uh, app or something like that. And I'm going to have a comma, then I'm going to write this file. Okay, now I need to create that application. So I'm going to make dir um, dash p. So I'm going to have core source main Scala com rock the JVM, and this is an autocomplete from my uh, uh, from my console. I'm, I term here because I uh, practiced this before. So I'm going to have let's call this core app dot Scala, and uh, I'm going to vim. I'm actually not going to use that as a directory. I'm going to call this um, uh, remove. So I'm going to remove this um, dash R. And I'm going to remove this because I accidentally make it a, uh, made it a folder. So I'm going to have a vim. Um, and I'm going to use this exact path. So core source means Scala com rock the JVM core app dot Scala. Right now it's an empty file. Cool. So I'm going to have a package. Uh, I'm going to have com rock the JVM. Then I'm going to have an object core app. And I'm going to have a, a main method with args as an array of string. And this returns unit. And then let's say I'm going to print line uh, simple module application. And I'm going to, first of all, write proper Scala. So def main. Let me write this. So I have a core application, and because I'm in the multi-module project, I need to hit SBT. And then I need to spin up this, uh, the application, or rather the assembly plugin. So I'm gonna have project core. So I need to switch to the module which had the assembly plugin installed there. And then I need to hit the assembly command. So assembly with two S's, so assembly. And uh, this should download, should try at least, should try to download the library definition from build.spt, but it seems that type level config at 142 is not available. For some reason, I don't know what's happening here. I'm going to use org type level, and I'm going to use cast effect. So let's write this one, exit, build SBT, and here on, instead of config, I'm going to use cat's effect. I know for sure that this is going to work. So cat's effect, I'm going to use instead of 142, I'm going to use 331 or 330. Uh, then I'm going to uh, write this, run SBT again, and I'm going to switch back to my project, which is core. So I'm going to say project core. Then I'm going to hit assembly, which will attempt to download the uh, library definition again. And uh, this time it's going to work. Okay, so we have a success. Now, what did this assembly command do? Well, it built a jar for the core module. So if I exit the SBT console and I go to uh, core and then target, notice that we have two folders here. Uh, originally, they weren't there. So if I do... If I go to SCAR 213, notice that we have core assembly 1.0.jar. So now we've built a binary out of this module. All right, now let me clear my little screen and actually let me bring this in view. So if you have core assembly 1.0.jar, this is a regular Java application. So I can say java-jar with core assembly 1.0.jar. And this will simply run the main application associated to this jar, which is going to simply print out the simple module application. So notice that this is a standalone Java application or Scala application compiled as a jar, and you can run this standalone. 
So this was an example of how you can use an SBT plugin to do various things. We demonstrated how to assemble a project or a module as a standalone jar. There are a variety of SBT plugins, for example, to ship your application to CICD, to assemble that as a Docker, to assemble that as a jar, and so on and so forth. There are a lot of SBT plugins out there. This was just a demonstration. Now, this plugin was local in the sense that we had uh, it installed in plugins.sbt. So the plugin is accessible under uh, project and plugins.sbt. So we had this SBT assembly as we discussed. But you can also have plugins defined globally. Globally means that no matter where your uh, SBT project is, or no matter how many SBT projects you have on your computer, all of those plugins will be loaded automatically by SBT when you start the SBT console. So for example, I can ship this plugins.sbt to a particular file location which starts at the home directory. So I'm going to go home and um, I have a directory here which is installed automatically with the installation of SBT, which is .sbt, this is a hidden directory. So under .sbt, then you have a bunch of directories here, boot preloaded, this is uh, not something that we should touch. We have different versions of SBT that you might have installed, I'm pretty sure you have a 1.0 there, so I'm going to go there. And under 1.0, I have a bunch of directories inside, and one is called plugins. So I'm going to uh, go back and uh, cd at dot sbt 1.0 plugins. And here under plugins, I can ship this plugins.sbt. And that will mean that the assembly plugin will be loaded for all sbt projects for which I'm going to start the sbt console. All right, awesome. So at this point, I can kill the rest of my terminals with Scala code and keep the main terminal with SBT, so I'm going to switch back to my multi-module project, and this is the structure that we currently have. Now, in this part, I want to show you resolvers, custom tasks, and then how to do command aliases and a bunch of other features that SBT can support. All right, now, what are resolvers? So resolvers are these locations that SBT can look into when you want to download and install additional libraries, which is obviously a core feature that SBT supports. So I'm going to navigate back to my build SBT, and we have a bunch of stuff here that we uh, filled in in previous parts. Now, one important setting that you can set here in build.sbt, much like you can do with library dependencies, is resolvers. So if I do, for example, resolvers plus equals, and then I'm going to use a construct called resolver.url. And resolver.url is a function that takes two arguments. One is a name, let's call this my uh, test repository or something like that. So my test repo and a URL, which is a function that uses some sort of location where you want SBT to search for artifacts, that is for binaries, for libraries that you might want to include. For example, HTTPS or at uh, rockthejvm.com slash repository slash whatever. So uh, the URL is specified here. And you might see this in other build uh, SBT files for certain libraries where uh, you publish your libraries to Sonotype or to uh, Maven Central or something like that. And you want to add all the resolvers in the same build SBT file so that SBT can search for your artifact everywhere. Now I'm going to comment this one because this URL is invalid. So this is how you can add an external uh, resolver. But you can also add an internal resolver, meaning that SBT will look for artifacts or binaries locally on your computer. For example, you can say uh, add a Maven uh, local repository, where you can say resolvers plus equals resolver dot and a function is called maven local maven local is a repository that is installed locally whenever you have sbt or maven or any tool that downloads libraries and to demonstrate how that works maven local is located under your home directory and if you do ls la to find out all the hidden repositories or hidden uh, uh, folder here we have a folder called dot m2 which is the place where all the Maven artifacts are stored locally or cached maybe so that Maven can fetch them automatically. So uh, 
If you do resolver maven local here in build.spt, this is the location on your hard drive where uh, such artifacts will be searched for by SPT. Now, this external resolver part where you say resolvers plus equals resolver URL is also a standard practice in many companies where you publish local artifacts just for your company. So when you have your own domain with your own repositories for your artifacts, uh, this is a standard practice to add resolver URL for your internal company's repository. So this quote unquote external will also work quote unquote internally for companies as well. All right, so this was how to add resolvers in a build SBT file. Now I'm gonna show you custom tasks. So I'm gonna add some uh, comments here, much like we do for other Rock the JVM tutorials where we add notes in our code. So another powerful feature of SBT is the ability to create custom tasks. So uh, apart from the built-in tasks, we can create some custom ones. And I'm going to create another terminal window here. And I'm going to navigate by uh, multi, my multi-module pro project. So under desktop, I have a multi-module project that I built in previous parts. And I will go to my project directory where I have my uh, plugins.spt and a file called constants.sca that I uh, wrote in the previous parts so that uh, we can refer that code in our build SPT. Now, in this uh, project directory, all Scala applications or all Scala objects or definitions are immediately visible in build.spt directly without any sort of import. And here I'm going to create, let's call this custom task.scala to demonstrate how you can invoke a custom task in the SBT console of this project. So under the project directory, I'm going to create this plain Scala file. I'm going to create a simple object. I'm going to call this custom task. Let's call this printer because the task is going to be very simple. And uh, I'm going to create a simple method. Let's call this print. So you can name any method in any way that you like. And I'm going to say print line. Uh, rock the JVM custom SBT task, for instance. So something like that. A plain Scala file with a plain object with a simple method will do for this demonstration. Okay, so now I have custom task.scala. Now, in build.spt, I can refer this custom task uh, because all Scala files are immediately available in build.spt without any sort of import. And in order to create a custom task, I need to define it as a name. So I'm going to define a lazy val. I'm going to call this printer task. And the way that we do that is by using a function called task key. Task key is a function that takes a type argument, which is the return value of a particular task, because tasks can also return values. And I'm going to show you how to do that shortly. And you need to give this a human readable name like custom printer task or something like that. Now, in this case, I've just registered a new task under this name, but I also need to bind this task to the code associated to it. So I'm going to have my printer task. So printer task has this colon equals association or assigner. It's simply a method returned by the object, uh, returned by the task key function. And then I'm going to uh, open and close some curly braces, and I'm going to have my custom task printer which is the name of the object that I created earlier. So custom task printer dot print. So in this way, I'm binding the code to the task object that I've created. So binding code to task. Cool. So after I've done that, after I've defined my printer task, I can write the build SBT file. Then I can invoke the SBT console in this project which will take a little bit of time. And then after the SBT uh, REPL is loaded, I can invoke this printer task. So I can say printer task exactly as it is. And notice that the printer tasks code is being executed. So this may bring some artifacts, this may invoke some plugins, this may invoke some whatever. And the printer task will simply run whatever code I associate to that, which in this case is just printing something. So this is how you can create a custom SBT task and this can uh, very much improve the power of your build system because this can go as wild as you want. 
Now, I'm going to create another task that will return a value. So I'm going to kill my SBT console. I'm going to go back to my project directory and I'm going to add a task that does a little bit differently, which is returning a value. So I'm going to have, let's call this, uh, let's call this string task dot Scala or something. I'm going to define um, an object. So an object, I'm going to call this string task. And uh, I'm going to define a simple method called this string task. And this returns a string. And I'm going to implement that as uh, UUID dot random UUID dot to string. I don't remember if I need to import anything. I don't think so because the sort of standard Java slash Scala packages are already included, if I remember correctly. Let me go back to my build.sbt. So I'm going to edit that. And I'm going to define a lazy val that will uh, return a task key of string in this case. I'm going to call this lazy val. I'm going to call this UUID string task as a task key of type string. And I'm going to call this random UUID generator. Cool. Now the UUID string task will be binded, bound, bound, bound to uh, my string task dot, I think it's called str task, if I remember correctly. Let's uh, exit that and I'm going to view this one. So str task, this is the name of the method here. And then I can exit and then I can try running the SBT uh, console to see if that works. And obviously, as I anticipated, this UUID thing was not important. Let me go back to my string task and I'm going to import that. UUID, I think it's called, it's uh, imported from Java Util. So import Java Util UUID. Let's write that and let's try running the SBT console again. Okay, no hiccup, hiccups this time. All right, now let me print my uh, UUID string task. So UUID string task. So if I try running this, it just uh, runs a success because it generated the string, but I cannot see that. So we might want to print whatever was generated by this UUID string task by editing my build SBT file and calling the UUID string task from the printer task. So tasks can depend on one another if you're interested in doing that sort of, th uh, that sort of thing. So let me try uh, editing this uh, build SBT file to invoke the UUID string task. So let's call this UUID as uh, UUID string task dot value. That's how you can obtain the value returned by uh, running that task. And I can say, for example, print line uh, generated UUID, and I'm going to inject the UUID inside. Obviously, I need to use an S-interpolated string. So I'm going to print that. And then the custom task printer dot print, which is invoked from somewhere else, just to uh, demonstrate that. Let's run the SBT console. And after that, we can run the command with printer task. So printer task. So notice that this invoked a, the UUID, which is the string task, and we have a valid UUID, and uh, we have the rest of the code. Now, if we call printer task multiple times, notice that the UIDs are different because the generation takes um, or runs every time we invoke that task. But if we want to memoize whatever UUID we are running at any particular point, we might want to change our code a little bit. So I'm going to edit my build SPT to do that. So if you want to save a custom value, you can do that with a custom setting. So custom settings. And you can define a custom setting, much like you do a custom task, and you can define a lazy val. I'm going to call this UUID string setting as, instead of a task key, I'm going to use setting key of type string. And uh, in much the same style, you can pass a name. So I'm going to have random UUID setting. Now, after you've defined the UUID setting 
uh, as a structure, let's say, you can bind the code associated to the string by saying UUID string setting, and you can use this funky association or assignment operator, and then you can pretty much do the same thing. So I can say UUID string task dot value. So I'm going to have val UUID as string task dot value, and uh, then you can return that UUID and you can add some more code. And then you can return a symbol value, which is the string that was generated. All right. Now you can also produce side effects inside. So in this add some more code, you can also print something if you're interested. I'm not going to do that. And um, inside my printer task, I'm going to show you the difference between invoking the UID string task and invoking or using the UID string setting. So let's call this UID task as UID string task dot value generated generated UID from task. And I'm going to pretty much do the same thing. So I'm going to copy that uh, and uh, paste it twice. So I'm going to have it here. And um, I'm going to call this UID, let's call this setting. So I'm going to have my UID string setting dot value. And inside my print, I'm going to have generated UID from setting. So if I save my build.spt file, notice that now I'm going to print uh, two UIDs. If I start my SBT console, it'll take a couple of seconds. If I call my printer task, we will see two uh, UIDs generated. So we have value UUID. Okay, I, I forgot something. So let's go back. Generated UID from task, and this is my UID task and UID setting. Setting. All right, cool. Let's try that again. And if I call my string task dot value, okay, what's happening here? So UID string task dot value, string task dot value. This is, uh, no, this is UID string task dot value. Silly me. And uh, let's save that. Do that again. Okay, you know what? Let me edit that in uh, my other terminal. So build SBT. What am I doing here? So we have UID string task dot value. The setting cannot depend on a task. And uh, this is a nice error from uh, SBT. Uh, it says the setting cannot depend on a task. So I'm going to invoke the code directly. So instead of saying UID string task dot value, I'm going to call the um, uh, string task dot str task. So string task, much like we did earlier with the UID string task itself. So notice that essentially I'm having the same code for a setting as for a task. Now the task, as you noticed earlier, is generating a new string every time, whereas the UID string setting, as you will see shortly, will save, will memoize whatever value it generated once. So it's like you define a def that you can invoke multiple times in the SBT console, or a val that you can use uh, all the time with the same value. All right, let's save this and let's try this again. Cool. And now my SBT console is successful. And if I do print task, print, where's that? Printer task. So printer task. And notice that we have generated UID from task and from setting. Obviously, these two are different. But if I call this multiple times, notice that the UID from task is always different between two runs, but the UID from setting is the same. This is a powerful feature of SBT that it allows you to define custom settings and custom tasks for pretty much arbitrary code. This is very, very powerful. The next thing that I wanted to show you is command aliases, which uh, will simplify your build process. Instead of typing a large number of commands, you just type in once. So I'm going to uh, go back to my build SBT, and I'm going to add a small section here, and I'm going to call this a command aliases. And uh, I'm going to use a function that's built into SBT. It's called add command alias. And add command alias will take two arguments, 
and uh, the first one is the name of the command that you will want to use, the alias. And uh, then the implementation, which is the equivalent of what you would have to write in SBT if you wanted to type them all yourself. For example, compile, uh, semicolon, and then test, and then semicolon, and then assembly. Now, let me go write that, and then in my other project, I can start my SBT console. And with the new build SBT loaded, I can use the simple command to run all of these at once. So I can do CI and then SBT will start compiling my code and then assembling my jars. One other thing that I wanted to show you here is cross-building between different Scala versions because in the Scala world, this is an issue when you want to build, especially if you want to build your own library or your own tools. It's often useful to build the tool for a variety of Scala versions. For example, if you want to support Scala 2.12 and Scala 2.13, you might want to cross-build your Scala code for those uh, values as well. So here under my build SBT, I can define values, for example, val, let's call this Scala 212, as uh, 2, 12, 16, or something like that, and Scala 213 as 2, 13, 8, which is the value that I'm using here. And for this build Scala version, I'm going to use, instead of the string itself, I'm going to use the value, Scala 213, for example. Now, if you want to build your uh, tool or your library for both Scala versions, you would have to specify a setting. And uh, for example, if I want to define the setting here in my core subproject, I can have my, uh, in settings here, I can have a comma here. And instead of having library dependencies, I'm also going to have a cross Scala versions. And I'm going to assign it just like I do for other settings as well. And I'm going to have a list for the strings of Scala versions that I might want to support. For example, Scala 2.12 and Scala 2.13. Now, if you want to compile your application or your module or your library for both Scala versions, let me go ahead and restart my SBT console. You would have to hit compile and you have to hit compile with a plus because you want to compile your code against all the, Scala, all the Scala versions that you want to support. So for example, if I hit compile, it will compile the entire project for Scala uh, 213, which is the value that I specified at the top, which is the this build Scala version. But if you want to build it against multiple Scala versions, you'd hit plus compile, which will run the same code against all the Scala versions. So notice that we have success for both Scala 2.13 and 2.12 as well. All right, folks, so that's it for this video. We spent an hour now discussing all the essential features of SBT that you will need for your Scala project. I hope this video was useful. If it was, click the like button for me and subscribe to the Rock the JVM channel for more videos like this. Check me out on Twitter and LinkedIn as I post fresh updates on upcoming material. And check out my website at rockthegvm.com. I have hundreds of hours literally on everything in the Scala ecosystem. So I'm waiting for you there. And until next time, I'm Daniel signing off.